Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE. The third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 144. Day, day 3144, the 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition. 3rd edition, day 144, we are working on the practice test that you will find at the end of the book on page number 364, section 6, and we are about to do problem number 11. As always, make sure the book is in front of, in front of you, make sure the book is in front of you, turn to the page and read the problem yourself from the book. Okay, as much as, as best as I do on the blackboard to write it out, I do not write it out in verbatim in its entirety. So here's what the problem says, problem number 11. It says that we have a line K. We have a line and the name of the line we have christened it line K. We have christened it K, letter K. We are told that it does not pass through the origin. We know that it's not going to go through the origin. The question simply is, which of the following statements, they're going to give us three statements, which of the following statements individually, they, it has to be individually, uh, individually provides sufficient information for us to be able to conclude that the line in question is negatively sloped. We have to be able to ascertain that it is a negatively sloped line based only on one given statement, whatever it is that is told to us by just one statement individually. So let's begin. Statement number, statement number A. Statement A says, statement A says that x intercept of the line x intercept of the line is equal to 2 times the y intercept 2 times the y intercept x intercept of the line is equal to 2 times the y intercept now you understand that x when we talk about x intercept it's some quantity some quantity here we are told is equal to 2 times some other quantity for example let's, 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 look, let's look at the side here for example if we are told that a equals 2 times b what do you surmise from that? What do you surmise from that? What do we get out of it? it is it possible? Is it possible for A, for example, is it possible for A to be positive 8 and B to be negative 4? That's not possible. It's not possible if A equals 2 times B, it is not possible for them to take opposite sign. It's impossible. It is not possible for A to be negative 8 and B to be positive 4. They cannot take opposite signs. If A is 2 times B, then they must, they must take the same sign. If B is negative 4, A must be negative as well. If B is positive, A must also be positive. They must take same sign, otherwise it won't work. It won't work. So here, we are told that X intercept is equal to 2 times Y intercept. What do we get out of that? What do we surmise from that? What we get out of is that what I what we get out of that is what we, what this what this implies is that either either they are either they are both positive and when we say they by they we mean the x intercept and the y intercept either they are both positive or just like this one or they are both negative. That's what they just told us, by simply telling us that x-intercept is 2 times y-intercept or x-intercept is 3 times y-intercept or x-intercept is 3,000 times y-intercept. It doesn't matter how many times it is. What they're trying to tell us is that they must take the same sign. Either both x-intercept and y-intercepts are positive or they are both negative. Let's see what it looks like in the picture. Let's see what it looks like in the picture. We need the room, obviously. So I'm going to erase the problem. We don't only need it. We only have it. So again, we have three statements. We have to analyze the information that is given to us in each of these three statements individually and ascertain whether or not the line is negatively sloped. That's all. So let's draw a picture and see what, what it must look like if both the x-intercept and y-intercepts are positive and when they are both negative. We don't need this anymore either. So here it is. Very simple, very straightforward. 
Here's the first scenario where they are both positive. Let me change the marker. I think this marker doesn't have much life left in it. They die very, very quickly. I don't know why. There you go. Can you see that they are both positive? What they are, it doesn't matter. The fact that they are two times, x, 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 x intercept is two times y intercept, it does warm the cockles of one's heart. It does warm the cockles of one's heart. But other than that, it really doesn't much do anything. So don't worry about that. What matters is that here, x intercept is here, what is some quantity, and y intercept is here, they are both positive, as you can see. x intercept is positive, and y intercept is positive. Here's another scenario. I'm going to put it in a different color. Here's another scenario of where they're going to be both negative. And there we go. Again, here's the y intercept. As you can clearly see, it's negative. And here's the x intercept. As you can see clearly, that is negative. So as long as both, both x intercept and y intercepts are positive, what we see is that, what we see here is that the line that emerges is negatively sloped. As long as both the x-intercept and y-intercept are negative, uh, are negative, what emerges from it is a line that is negatively sloped. And those are the only two possibilities. Those are the only two possibilities. If both intercepts are of the same sign, if the both intercepts are the same sign, then the line in question, then if, if, both, if both intercepts are of the same sign, sign, same sign as in if they are both positive or both negative, then then what we conclude is that then the line in question, line in question must be negatively sloped, must be. As we can clearly see there, which means the statement A works. We had our job is to establish whether or not the line is negatively slow based on what we were told and the answer is yes it's enough information one more time it doesn't matter that the x intercept is two times y intercept don't waste your time on that don't try to put numbers in there and waste your time it is not necessary they could have put it two here they could have put it 12 here they could have put it 12,000 here it makes no difference they both have to be the same sign let's do statement b statement b Statement A works. Let's see what statement B says. The statement B says that the product product of x intercept and y intercept is positive. Is positive. Here is x intercept, it's some quantity, x intercept times here's some y intercept and we are told that their product is positive. What do you suppose they are telling us? Are you able to see immediately? Are you able to see immediately that they are simply repeating what they told us in the first statement? It's a simple repetition. Same simple repetition right here. They both intercept with the same sign. The line, the, then the line in question must be negatively sloped if the both intercepts are the same sign. That's exactly what it is here. If the product is positive, if the product is positive, this implies, this implies that either, either x intercept is positive and y intercept is positive. This is the only way their product is going to be positive. Or x intercept is negative and y intercept is negative. That's the only way their product is really positive. They cannot be of the opposite sign. Because if x intercept and y intercept has opposite sign, the product of the two intercepts would not be positive. And if they are both of the same sign, right here, it's a repetition. In statement B, it repeats what the statement A just told us in different words. They phrase it differently, but it's the exact same statement. So what we conclude, we conclude right here, they are both of the same sign. And, what we, and we saw before that if both of the if both intercepts, I hope that you're able to understand the abbreviation INT here does not mean integers in this context. I'm using it as intercepts. If both intercepts, if both intercepts are of the same sign, if both intercepts are of the same sign, then the line in question must be positively sloped right here. It's right there. They're both intercepts are positive, both intercepts are negative. We don't have to redo the work. 
So statement two is also sufficient by itself for us to be able to ascertain that the line in question must be negatively sloped. Why is it sufficient? Because it's the same bloody thing what we saw in A. No difference. Let's look at statement C, the third statement. The statement B also works, remember. The statement B also works. So, so far A has worked. So far the statement A has worked. B has worked. And now we are about, B has worked. And uh, now we are about to analyze C. Let's see what statement C says. Statement C says, oh, statement C is a little tricky. Statement C is uh, tricky, it's something new. Uh, let's start from the top. We don't need any of this thing. So we are looking at statement C right there, A and B1. Statement C says, the line L passes through Line L passes through points AB and RS. And don't make a fuss about it, the fact that the, they, they call it line L and they call it in the problem line K and all of a sudden I switch the name to line L, it doesn't change anything. Do you understand whether you call the bloody thing L or K, it is still the same line. Do you understand? If it makes you happier, make it K, I don't care. So, how do we find the slope? How, how do we usually find a slope of a line when we are given the coordinates of two of the points that it goes through? So simple slope as always, slope as always is simply the change in y coordinate over the change in x. It simply tells us how much does y change for a given change in x. Let's find out. So, and again, we have to decide do we want to use this as a starting point and this as a final point or the other way around? But whatever way we go, we must be consistent. So let's do, uh, let's, let's treat this as a final point or let's treat it as a starting point. So this minus that, so change in y is simply s coordinates, which is what s, uh, a, or rather y coordinates of this point, which is, I'm explaining too much, I'm just going to shut up. It's simply s minus b, and then r minus a. Okay, that's what it is so far. What does it tell us? Does it tell us anything else? It says it passes through these two points and then they go on to tell us and they, and they go on to tell us that and the product of this quantity A minus R times B minus S is negative. The product of these two quantity is less than zero. You with me so far? The product of these two quantity is less than zero. Before we go back to this thing, let's finish analyzing this thing. Again, what do we surmise from that? If the product of two quantities is negative, if the, product of the, if the product of these two quantities is less than zero, if it's negative, there, is, there are only two possibilities. There are only two possibilities, that is, either, either this first quantity that you see there is positive, and this second quantity that you see there is negative. Positive times negative will give us something, neg will give us something less than zero. Or, this first quantity is negative, this first quantity that we see here is negative, whatever that happens to be, we don't care, times the second quantity that we see here, B minus S, whatever that quantity is, has to be positive, it must be positive. Negative times positive is the only way you can get a negative quantity. Are you with me so far? No. One last thing, I, I should have, I used this as a final point and this as a starting point because it came first. I should have done it the other way around because we see A minus R here. Here we have R minus A and we have B minus S and here we have S minus B, which is not a big deal, which is not a big deal. Simply take the top quantity and the bottom quantity and multiply top and bottom by negative 1. If you multiply top and bottom by negative 1, we'll end up with negative 1 times B will be negative S, negative 1 times negative 1 times B, negative B will be positive B and negative 1 times S will be negative S. Again, I'm explaining too much. I have to shut up, you understand? I explained too much. I'm just going to be quiet. So, if you multiply the two quantity, we'll end up with B minus S. And on the bottom, negative 1 times R minus A will become A minus R. With you so far?
And again, don't make a fuss. As I told you before, that I could switching from capital letter to small letter. It really doesn't matter. Okay, let's analyze it, shall we? We are almost there. We are almost there. So, with A minus R, if, if it's positive, if A minus R is positive, in other words, if this bottom quantity is positive, then B minus S, which appears on the top, numerator, must be negative. And remember, this is our slope. So, if slope, in one situation, the numerator, the numerator is negative, and the denominator is positive, then slope must be what? If this is a situation, I left no room here, I made it very crowded. If that's the situation, that implies the slope has to be negative. Because negative divided by positive is negative. Or, or, maybe A minus R is negative. If A minus R happens to be negative, then we, got, we, we, we extract it from here. That if that's the case, if A minus R is negative, then B minus S, this quantity must be positive because the other product is negative. So if A minus R is negative, then B minus S must be positive. And what do you suppose we're going to get for slope if we have a numerator, positive numerator, and a negative denominator? Well, we'll end up with, we'll end up with a slope that is negative. In both cases, in both cases, we find out the slope is negative. And those are the only two possibilities. In, 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 uh, in, in both cases, we find the slope is negative. So are we able to, are we able to answer the question? Our, our job was to ascertain whether or not this line is negatively sloped. And the answer is yes. We are able to surmise that, we are able to conclude that, that this the line in question must be negatively sloped, because these are the only two possibilities. C also works. This is one of the rare occasions where all three statements work. Statement C also works. Statement C also works. Statement A we found out. Statement A we found out provided provided the sufficient information for us to be able to tell that the line is negatively slope. The statement B we found out also did the job. And now we just find out that statement C works just as well. All of these three statements individually provide us sufficient information for us to be able to say, for us to be able to conclude without a shadow of doubt that the line in question must, the word here, the word that is used here is must, line in question must be negatively sloped. Let's look at the percentile, shall we? What do you suppose? What percentage of the people you suppose discuss this question? Or got, what percentage of the people you suppose this, they got, the, got this question right? Unfortunately, unfortunately, when this problem was given in the exam, 90% of people had trouble with it. 90%. A small minority of 10% managed to cope with it. And the reason is because people have to calm down. You have to remain collected. You have to remain calm and analyze it rationally. Whatever it is that you're told, analyze it rationally, calmly, collectedly. We mustn't freak out systematically go through each one step by step. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? That's the end of my sermon. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.